Yes, it's that time again. Mince pies, brandy infused with cream, Christmas cake, packed stuffed with dry fruits, turkey, chicken, glazed carrots, honey infused parsnips, buttered sprouts, roast potatoes, tossed in double goose fat, Yorkshire pudding, pigs in blankets, lots of stuffing, mulled wine, getting tipsy, and a bit of sherry, a glass of Buck's Fizz and smoked salmon for breakfast. Right, Mr. Sahi, I think it's time to snap out of your Christmas dream and have your aloo tikki and amritsari chole for now. Welcome to the Shabby and Man podcast. We are partners, parents, podcasters, broadcasters and everything else in between. As you may have imagined, this is our Christmas special. And uh, yeah, you are feeling rather Christmassy, rather festive, I have to say. What is the Christmas book in you? Washing up. Washing up. These are the kind of things I, you know, I just want to sit back Play wrapping, board games, wrapping, doors off in front of the TV. Last minute panic shopping, wrapping endless presents, trying to find the end bit of the scotch tape which somehow does not seem to come you off. just can't peel it off. You just can't peel it off. But you get endless all these, washing up. You get all these contraptions, you know, a little bit of kind of a blade kind of thing where you just... Christmas time the name every year all other times of year it is we know exactly where it is but this time of year somehow it magically disappears when I was young I could cut cellar tape with my teeth oh but, that must uh, have been you must have been very young yeah well, uh, when, I, when I had teeth and uh, yeah and endless washing up and uh, sitting around washing up and uh, some hint you're trying to give me are you yeah. making such a huge spread yeah no I'm not making a huge spread but this year is your turn to wash up is what I'm saying me and fairy liquid. You and fairy liquid. We're a yes. Team. Um, now, you know why I'm saying this? Hmm. Why? Why this? All this went through my head. Because it's Christmas around the corner. Because it's Christmas. Good point. But also because I um, I read this survey recently, where um, they asked these kids, "What does Christmas evoke in you? What do you think Santa smells like?" Smells like. That's yeah. a strange question. Uh, well, it was uh, wonderful answers. Someone, mm. you know, some said it smells of mince pies. Uh, not it, but he smells of mince pies, huh. pine trees. Starry skies, which is very nice. Yeah. Some said he smells of soot and sweat. Others said, you know, le- leather, boot polish, velvet. You know, he's got that velvety ha. red suit. Ha. And it's, and it's not just in um, our part of the world. Mm. When they asked the same question in Australia, mm. um, some kids said that I think he smells of um, smoked barbecued uh, barbecues on the beach. Mm. So, so I think it universal. is evocative of wherever you, whatever you associate Christmas with, whatever your rituals may be. Well, for me, I think Santa, from what I can remember, smells of booze and fags. I think if it was in India, it was old monk. If it's uh, if it was in England, it was um, a bit of Napoleon brandy. But then saying that, it may not, kids, it may not have been the real Santa. I may have got duped. Yes. If you're very smart, I'm surprised some kid hasn't said that uh, my Santa... Smells of um, Christian Dior or Gucci Guilty, whatever their dad was. But I, <laughs> I, I don't think kids have sussed it out yet. I mean, healthy and garlic bread. Healthy and garlic bread. <clears throat> I have to say this concept of Santa is fairly new to me. I know we've had kids and they're teenagers now and we've done this charade of leaving out a carrot and mince pie for Rudolph and a half a cup of uh, milk for Santa. What do you mean Santa. Santa's uh, new for you? Though? Yeah, as in, you know, in India, growing up in India, I've said this many, many times, while India is still big on the actual Christmas ritual, you know, you see Christmas trees and you see Christmas cake and you see people have these lovely parties and all. But when we were growing up in the 80s, I don't think we ever did the entire, all the rituals like, you know, pulling Christmas crackers, sitting down to a Christmas dinner, waiting for your Santa to come and deliver presents. No, you just bought each other Christmas presents. Yeah, but Kelly, I totally disagree with you. It was only in India I learned about Santa and Banta. Ah, Santa and Banta, to okay. And if you're asking me what Santa and Banta might smell like, I would say Sarso Ka Saag and Makke Di Roti this time of year. But um, yeah, it is that time of year. Do you think your perception of Christmas changes? when you are a young parent and when your children have grown up. I think it does. In my case, it definitely does. Because the simple ritual of putting up the Christmas tree. You know, when our kids were much younger, I think we were very, very disciplined about putting it up when everybody else was putting it up. But now with two teenagers in the house, they couldn't be bothered. We couldn't be bothered. So our Christmas tree went up at about, um, went up only about four or five days ago last weekend I think um, 
And uh, I remember when they were kids, I would always allow them to pick their own baubles and put them up, and then you stand back and admire and say, "Oh, how lovely!" You and still once, got them. yes, and once they go back to bed, that is when you take everything down and put everything back up properly when it looks really nice. You don't need to do that because now they barely look at the Christmas tree; they don't even notice it's there. But um, yeah, I think no, Christmas. I, I don't agree with you. I think they're still very excited. To get their presents. Presents, yes, but not so much dececorating the tree and being interested. Saying in that they don't really want physical presents anymore. Yeah, they're into so like vouchers, the vouchers and online anymore. games and all of that. So I think I feel that Christmas is essentially for children, and for adults, it is just an excuse to overeat. By the way, I feel about this very strongly because I've been following a lot of these health websites, and all of them say. that if you are uncomfortable binging on christmas day if you think that for hundreds of years because everybody has kind of you know eaten and had one too many to drink and it is the done thing on christmas and if you're uncomfortable with it put your foot down set your own tradition nothing counts more than your health and obviously these are people who are trying to lead a healthy life and they're trying to kind of say that that one day of excess doesn't have to be excess uh, a day of excess if it doesn't sit right with you i believe in that I don't because it's only one day. No. You've got 364 days to get your life back together again. Oh, but is it one day? Here you are talking about are you going to fit in that mulled wine and the sherry and the salmon and the gammon and the pork and the parsnips and everything on one day in that one meal? Okay. What's a week between What's friends? What's a week between friends? Between Christmas sales? Oh. I'll have to get everything again discounted. That has changed again because Christmas sales, let's face it, everything is perpetually on sale for the last 2 years because retail has taken such a knock from covid and we haven't even said the most main fact that Which there may not even be a christmas there may not even be a christmas in terms of uh london even, um, you know by the time you hear this podcast yeah we will know just today only by the way yeah we will know in the uh, what, christmas is what 5 6 days away yeah there may not be one there may not be one because as you know we are recording this in london because we live in london and london is the epicenter of the omicron virus in the uk london cases are going up so quickly that Uh, our mayor declared it an emergency yesterday and he said Maybe. that hospitals are being overwhelmed so london is really not looking good at all i, I feel like we're um, the guinea pigs the mm. whole world is looking at us to yeah. see what the next step is going to be where it's going to take us i think there is a how lot of bad this omi crumbs yeah. and do you remember but when we did the last podcast two weeks ago hmm We couldn't even say, we didn't even know what it was. We couldn't even say the name properly. I was saying Omicron. Speak for yourself. You couldn't say the name properly. And then you know, I kind of realized it's Omicron. Yeah. You know, I have also had some very interesting conversations with a few friends of mine, and they said that uh, you know what, much as lockdown and COVID and all of that changed our lives completely Sorry. last year. I was a bit confused. Uh, is it the fact that you had an interesting conversation, or the fact that you have friends? Oh please both both I have interesting friends and these friends said that last year Christmas was absolutely brilliant wasn't it okay so families couldn't get together there was a lot happening in the world and we had to kind of isolate and stay within our family bubbles but for once it was amazing to not have the pressure of you know catering to a million I know that is the buzz of Christmas I know what you know Christmas is all about not what is on the table but who's around the table but as a one off You know, to be in your pajamas all day, to eat and drink what you want, when you want, not to have any uh, kind of ritual to follow because the world was in lockdown. No, That was a no, different feeling no as well. No social pressures. No, no. No social pressures at all. I don't know if you remember this. <clears throat> We were big on Christmas food last year on Christmas Eve and on Boxing Day but actual Christmas lunch hamara tha paratha and bhindi and uh, and salad and raita I still remember this and you were like this is not Christmas I've never had this on Christmas day but that's what we did because we had loads of Christmas food before and after Christmas day that was even just I think so that was wrong no nah, there's nothing wrong about it I think it was different it's something we will remember Like one person is different is another person is so wrong yeah well there you go uh so we we don't know w- what shape or form christmas might take come weekend but we're hoping that we will still be able to stay safe meet our immediate family at least because that is i know i i moan about it but when the actual day arrives i want everything to be exactly the way it is i want all the food on the table we want the presents we want the lights we want the drink the, the drinks the booze the cheese and uh, obviously we want to celebrate the day with with our family well any more thoughts on this um, ultra transmissible variant that is kind of 
totally dominating everything. Yeah, I think it just hits home the fact that what I suppose Gordon Brown and the WHO and these people have been saying for the last six months that all the rich countries of the first world were feeling very smug, thinking that they had hoarded enough vaccines for their population. Yeah, should the need arise, completely ignoring the fact or blindsiding the fact that. unless and until even the poorest of the poor in this world are jabbed and double jabbed these viruses will continue to mutate and circulate and variants will continue to haunt us all so it is not about hoarding enough vaccines f- to make your citizens safe it is about taking the responsibility shouldering the responsibility to identify the third world countries where some some in certain parts of africa i think even 5% of the population has not been jabbed yet you know to reach out to them and not give them an option but make them realize that unless again as we say unless everyone is safe the no one is safe. has to be jabbed the whole world has to be jabbed for us to, be for us to fight this off slowly right well, one thing that i heard which uh, really struck a chord with me was that many people are saying that this new uh, omicron uh, variant, variant is milder than the delta variant mm. so far yeah though you know it takes 2 3 weeks to know what's happening yeah but i think they're looking at the example of south africa at the moment hmm. but um, someone said a very uh, made a very good point that um, okay let's suppose it is milder hmm. but it, the reach is so huge this one is spreading much faster hmm. so let's just say that it's milder but even if it's just 5% of people get the omicron um, virus, virus who need to be hospitalized yeah that is such a huge amount yeah, of people it's probably it's 5% more than of a huge, huge number amount, yeah yeah so which so is that important. has to be taken into account yeah and i think it's very evident for all to see that whether it makes sense to anyone <laughs> yeah whether it is scientists or whether it is our politicians everyone is playing it by ear because this has never happened in the world before and each variant is arriving for the first time completely unannounced untested everyone is hoping that the vaccinations will give us some sort of protection and defense and we can see that it has but how potent it might be and how many vulnerable people it might uh, affect those who actually end up being in hospital and losing their lives is anybody's guess right now and um, a lot of people are also saying that if the mayor of london waits for until after christmas if he you is know plays is it going up like twice uh, it doubles every two, every two days yeah it doubles every two days which is a massive amount which is absolutely I think massive yesterday it was 10000 people in london alone yesterday, yeah 26000 26000 yeah so and the think, day before that must have been 10000 and uh, in london uh, not london but Uh, UK in, in the UK it was 90 something thousand people have got the virus mm. so you're That's saying that even if it is 10% of uh, the population needing hospitalization it is 10% of 97000 you're looking yeah, at yeah and they're saying that if we don't stop it ha huh. it's just going to uh, go it up it could go up to over a million a day hmm. yeah That's then someone also said that the unofficial figure should stand 300,000 300,000 a day people who I, I heard i think you and me must have heard the same thing on yeah. the radio yeah and not just that we can see it first hand you These know only the people who actually take the test yeah my co- i've had medicine. colleagues at work who've tested positive and they're isolating now we've had friends of our sons you know as soon as you hear that somebody in the yeah, class yeah. or somebody in their friends group obviously we all start testing and we all keep each other safe but we can see that there are so many people within our circle you know within our colleagues and friends and family and extended family and it is hit and miss like uh, the youngest one went to see spiderman 2 days ago yeah of the the whole cinema was full of yeah. school kids that yeah. day because schools broke up and i think two three of his friends have caught it yeah not while, the ones who went while, with him but somebody else not the ones else. who went with him yeah. but the ones who went to the show after him yeah Yeah. yeah. So naturally that means that all of them test just to yeah. keep themselves yeah. safe and so keep us is. safe. London is at the moment. If there is a hot bed. A hot bed, yeah. And it is not not looking good at all. Uh again I think it boils down to everyone taking personal responsibility. Everyone doing hands face space testing uh taking the jab. I think what's going to happen. Mm. Now we'll find out when the next podcast comes out I could be totally wrong but I think mm. they're going to let Christmas happen mm. and then they're going to probably do kind of a circuit breaker a lockdown or something just to control the numbers. I know but then there are Maybe experts who are saying year. that mm. if you do exactly what you did the last year because you got emotional about Christmas and you understand what it means to people this might be the only time they get to see extended members of their family. If you allow emotion to get the better of you then many people are also saying that a lockdown after Christmas is too little too late. It's going to be uh, if christmas mind you christmas is a whole week away and you're looking at a virus which is d- doubling every 
other second day, day, second yeah. day, yeah. So they're saying that even in seven days, numbers could be uncontrollable. And so that is something people have to think about. I would also like to say, because we say exactly how we feel, we are not politically correct on this podcast. I would like to give a huge shout out to Google. I read somewhere that Google might just bring in a rule where people who are not uh, jabbed will lose their job eventually, which I think is fantastic. I know there's a whole anti-vaxxers <laughs> you know, I'm, lobby. I'm so confused. Like, I was going to say, how will they know when I'm Googling someone that I'm no, jabbed? No, no, don't be silly. Uh, those who work for Google. But you should put that stipulation there in there. There is an entire lobby Google. of anti-vaxxers who feel that, oh, it's a conspiracy theory and, oh, yeah, yeah, we've seen how much the first jab worked. Look what's happening right now and all of that. I just have nothing but pity for them. And I feel that, you know, because of the nature of the pandemic, if you choose not to take a jab and it affects only you, well and good. You're an adult. You're well within your rights to do exactly how you want to live. And if you want to fall a victim to this pandemic, that's your choice. But because this is a pandemic where you could be a carrier and you could actually go scot-free and pass it on to someone who may succumb, that becomes unacceptable. It only means that you're being selfish, ignorant, and you're shirking your social responsibility. I hope there are some anti-vaxxers who are listening to us who know exactly how just, a majority you, of the world feels. You, you, there are said, so many you, of my media said, friends. I was just gonna, you've just taken the words out of my mouth. I was going to say, how do you feel about some of your friends yeah, they are. who are quite openly... Anti-vax. Uh, either they, you know, conspiracy you know, theorists. I types. wish they were open. They are chickens. They will only be retweeting people who are anti-vaxxers. They don't have the guts to actually come out in the open and say it themselves that we don't believe this is right. Yeah, most of them are absolute chickens, and I think it's completely wrong. In fact, I know there is one person uh, on my station who's an anti-vaxxer, and I'm extremely worried about the fact that he comes in or she comes in without a jab, while the rest of us are jabbed, broadcasting from the same studio, endangering all of us. Gosh, so, I, I think I opened a hornet's nest there. I think I you did. I, I think uh, you did. If only someone knocked some sense into these anti-vaxxers and if only the virus had some sense to only attack them and affect their lives and their loved ones, maybe then they would come to their senses. But sadly, the virus makes no difference, no distinction between those uh, who've had their jab and those who haven't. Right, so... <laughs> Should we move on? Uh, let us, please. Um... Oh, you went to see uh, you went to see uh, Ray Fiennes. Lord, I did. Lord Voldemort. Lord Voldemort. I, I for me, I think my favorite movie of his has um, got to be um, Schindler's List. Is Schindler's mm. List and English patient. 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 English patient. English patient. Yeah, but I you think know, that yeah, anything yeah, he's you done. You may mock me, but there were many people oh. who couldn't say sure, yeah. who couldn't say sir rather, just say sure. Yeah. So from, for years, you know, people just say instead of my name being Sai, Manis. Say, Manis. Shahi. Shahi. <laughs> they still, lots of them yeah. still do it. Manis, you know? Shahi. Yes. Manis. They said the SNH in the wrong place. Shahi ji. Shahi ji. Yeah, that should make you feel good. Shahi means royal, regal. Um, what? To be called Shahi Paneer all your life? Shahi Paneer. But, uh, yeah. Did you so just cough? Ralph Fiennes, I did. I do apologize. Ralph Fiennes was um, in a one act, not one act play. What would you call it? A one monologue. Man, one man play. A one man show. Uh, for 70 minutes without a break. No, these things can go either way. They can either be very interesting or yeah. really boring. Yeah, so let me be very honest about this. It was T.S. Eliot who happens to be one of my mum's favourites. So you went favorites. on behalf of your mum to watch it? I didn't go on behalf of my mum. I wanted to go and see Lord Voldemort on stage. End of. And he was, he had he has directed this production as well. It's called The Four Quartets. It is the last thing that T.S. Eliot ever wrote. And he wrote this during the Second World War, which meant that his writing and his life was interrupted many, many times during the Blitz. So that is reflected in what he has written. It is called The Four Quart Quartets. It reflects on time travel and soul and life and a lot of things. I have to say, I was extremely impressed by the fact that Ray Fine spoke for 70 minutes without a pause, just taking three sips of a glass of water that had been left on stage for him. But other than that, it made absolutely no sense to me. I mean... Uh, I, you know, you're a bit of a... Culture vulture. <laughs> arty farty. Yeah, yeah. I wasn't going to be so kind. Yes. I was going to say a bit of a conundrum. Yeah. Uh, there's one side, you're this expert on the wiki cat wedding yes the other side you're watching uh, t.s Eliot plays that is my job t.s Eliot, i opted to go and see and i have to say the, the west end has never left me disappointed you know i i know that i i know what i want to see i have a good inkling of what i might like and those are the only productions i watch but this one completely i mean if you know it was just a 70 minute monologue which was I guess that's perfectly delivered because he did not forget. He didn't fumble. He didn't stop. He didn't pause. I guess that's what we're different. You're going to watch this highbrow thing. Yeah. I'm going this week to watch uh, a pantomime. Yeah. 
or in the Palladium with all these stars. It's over. behind you. Yeah, that is what yeah, it is. Yeah, that's what I love. It's going to have lots of double entendres. Yep. To my, each his own. My kind of thing. To each his own. Yes. Um, yeah, you've left out a pantomime. Yeah, when you gave your list of what Christmas is all about, pantomime, the Bond film, Queen's Speech, so many things you left out. I was concentrating on the food bit. Oh, you're concentrating on food, all right. and and a bit of board games. I mean, you know what's going to happen, don't you? What? We're going to. There's going to be monopoly. There's going to be a fight. There's going to be. I don't think I have patience to play Monopoly anymore. Monopoly is a game that requires at least two and a half days, and you have to be under seven to really enjoy counting all that fake money and looking at who's going to jail as who's getting out of jail. Uh, oh, very. This Christmas has really brought out your opinions. It, it has really. Well, Anti vaxxers Monopoly. Yes, and why one, I'm one man plays anything else you hate. Yes. Yes. Oh, sorry. Washing up. Washing up. While I'm airing my views, there's another film that I made the mistake. Of watching, I had the misfortune of watching because you forced me to, and it's two and a half hours of my life that well, I will never well, get back. Let me just ex- first tell the listeners. I'm sure they know it anyway. anyway. Yeah, but I don't think I can force you to do anything. No, but then you kind of emotionally blackmailed me into oh because we saw the first one, oh because we liked the first one, oh because we can hardly remember the first one, oh because individually we like Saif and Rani, oh because it's Yashraj, and also because I've just been told it's on Amazon or Netflix. Let's watch it. Oh, I didn't realize they say oh so much. Yeah. So we watched it and it was what a waste of time. Went to Dubai too. Oh my god, I don't even want to go there. Yeah, I thought it was quite funny. Yeah, I, I thought it was just it wasn't a film. There was no story. It was just people wearing Rani Mukherjee just finding an and excuse to wear Sabesachi after Sabesachi. Sherwari Wag just trying to show us what a great body she has and she does. I think she's a very beautiful girl. Other than that there was very little substance. We already know Saif is a good actor. I already think the world of Siddhant Chaturvedi I think he let himself down massively in this film. I'm hoping that he'll redeem himself in the next film that he does. But we saw so many movies. We saw Suryavanshi, Suryavanshi, Suryavanshi. I have to say I thought I would hate Suryavanshi a lot more than I did. Suryavanshi wasn't so bad. It was okay. You had to you it didn't put your, put your brain away for a you bit. You had to put, put your brain away for a bit which you're happy to do. But this one it, there was no story. There was no story. It was just two people trying to imitate two con artists and What are you talking about? Bunty Bubbly. Bunty Bubbly too. There was I thought you were talking about Suri They had not put any effort in developing at least a little bit of a storyline which would make you wonder what happens next. All you wonder is where is the stop button on this remote? But yeah. that was probably just me right i think that's enough um I, are you saying that the next time we do the podcast it will be 2022 no then you yeah, yeah, right it might be 2022 or we might do one in that weird time between christmas and twixmas twixmas we might do a twixmas special uh, <laughs> you said twixmas didn't you yeah that reminds me of um a, Twix? a joke yeah no okay, yeah a, a chocolate joke yeah yeah just relax mm. don't get your snickers and a twix oof I don't know who you've been pulling these Christmas crackers with. Wasn't me. Right, I think it's time we should uh, say our bye-byes. Firstly, thank you so much to everyone who's been tuning in all year. We've seen some stats, I believe. This podcast is very, very popular in Austria. We have absolutely no idea why or how, but we are just so grateful to those of you who are listening to us. The hills are alive with the sound of Shabin man. Well, there you go. And uh, to anybody else who's taken the trouble to listen to us, to download, to recommend, to send us a message, um, or just to give us a little bit of your time, it means the world to us. Thank you so much. And if we don't see you till next year, have a fantastic Christmas and an even better New Year. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Till next time. Bye bye now. <laughs>